That's the worst part. It's kind of like the person who says they're humble. I'm like, I'm such a humble guy. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so full of humility right now. Like, you've already devoid yourself of any humility. <laughs> Morning, everybody. I'm Richard, and we've got Contra Thoughts coming up next. All right. Cheers. Coffee. Our sponsor today, Coffee. My name's Richard. I'm a husband and a father. I'm a pastor of a small church in Kentucky. Uh, I am from California originally, although I live in Kentucky now. I've been here since 2013. Uh, we've got four children. The Lord has been good to us, and uh, it's been hard, but your life's hard too for different reasons, and let's rejoice that he's woken us up today, and let's rejoice in Jesus triumphing over the grave that he's defeated both sin and death, that Jesus is better. God's word is better. The Holy Spirit living inside you, He animating you, prompting you, urging you is better. That being said, we're going to talk about a <clears throat> thing from The Guardian, video from The Guardian. It's got two and a half million views. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. 2.7 million views three months ago from Minnesota. It's in Minnesota. The Guardian, 1.82 million subs, a little bit more than I have. Um, very, very liberal newspaper out of London. Inside America's last whites-only church. And that's caught, my gar caught me off guard slightly, but it's The Guardian, right? It's kind of like um, New York Times or something like that, Washington Post. Uh, just very leftist, very biased. Now we're all biased. You're biased, I'm biased. And I get it, but... When you're the problem with some people's biases, especially the leftism of a lot of people, is that they pretend that that's the norm and they're not biased. That's the worst part. It's kind of like the person who says they're humble. I'm like, I'm such a humble guy. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so full of humility right now. Like, you've already devoid yourself of any humility. You, you can't be humble and talk about how humble you are. Like, it doesn't work. So, The Guardian has this gal, a more melanated gal. Of course, she's a lady, melanin plus. Um, seems very distraught throughout this whole video. It's a 15, 16 minute video. And she goes to Minnesota. I'm not going to watch play the whole thing. But we're going to pause and, and go along. Um, because it's important. I want the whole part of this channel main part of this channel, is to drag the feet of the world or the church or some silly, trendy thing. And this right now, very, very trendy, is racism. Racism's the original sin. It's horrible. It's bad. And it's the only problem. That's the big cue. Not to say that racism isn't bad. Of course it is bad. But actual racism. Not me looking like this and somebody else with tanner skin or more melanin or a different hair style or more whatever. That's not racist. Hating somebody based on how they look or where they're from, that's racist. Okay. I don't like that person based on the color of their skin or what language they speak, what food they eat, blah, 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 blah. That's racist. It's, it's just ignorance, really. Because the scripture is clear that God created people, two people. Now, of course, the Guardian doesn't believe that. Um, and these people in this video that these they're showcasing also don't believe that. I don't believe. Um because they believe in multiple gods, but more on that in a moment, we'll see that this isn't really a church at all. <clears throat> he made from one man every nation of mankind, Acts 17 tells us. And so that's just one of many, many, many places that affirm that God is not only the creator, but he created human beings. And they're all, we're all the same, right? This is why someone with really, really dark skin and someone with really, really light skin or somebody in between or somebody who's tall or short or fat or skinny or whatever... A man and a woman can come together in unity sexually and create a baby. Okay? If we were different races, quote unquote, that wouldn't be able to happen. That can't happen with a monkey or a dog. Okay? Gross, gross, gross. People try. And don't worry. We'll get there eventually. They'll probably try and have some sort of Supreme Court ruling on that at some point. But it's still illegal here in 2022. January. January. 
I don't have a watch on. And so she's here, and this is where this is such a the leftist idea of like <clears throat> this kind of neutrality is such a bad way to live because they're using <clears throat> their worldview, their lingo, and they're stealing from the Bible, okay? And the word, um, the word of God proper, but also just God in general and his ethics, his right and wrong. God gave the 10 commandments. Don't have idols. Don't have any other gods before me. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Children obey your parents before that. Like don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't covet. Cheat isn't actually one technically. Don't covet. That's the last one. God's law says this, and we, you, we've all broken it. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need you. That's why, listener, viewer, if you're not in Christ, turn to Christ. Why? Ask yourself, why haven't you turned to Christ? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you've not been told about Jesus. Well, I'll tell you about Jesus after the break. No. Uh, Christ came into the world to save sinners, both God and man. God adding humanity to himself, becoming a child, a baby, living for 30 odd years, perfectly, flawlessly, setting not only our example, yes, but also he is the perfect lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that you cast your burdens on him, he cares for you, he takes them, and then he gives you new life. On the cross, which is why we celebrate Easter, Resurrection Day, at least that's why Christians do, God poured out his wrath, all of his past, present, and future sin on his son. There's so much more on that. But that's the gist of the gospel. And not just that, but then he defeated the grave. He killed sin. He put death to death. And then he ascended after 40 days, more of ministry, post-resurrection. And then we have the scripture. We have the Bible. And here we are in North America. The point is, Jesus is better. He is the word made flesh. He is the one who dwells among us. So this caught my eye because I'm like, oh, yeah, church, whites only. The world says I'm white, white, with an H, some people anyway. So let's watch this and see. So let's let's get this right here. I'm going to go a little bit faster, uh, 1.25 speed, because, you know, we don't have all day. This to be a place that brings spiritual connection. This may look like an average religious gathering, but this is no ordinary church service. This is the Acid Truth Folk Assembly, known simply as the AFA, a fringe heathen group that mandates their members have Northern European heritage, a whites-only church in 21st century America. They represent a disturbing trend in contemporary white nationalism, the co-opting of heathen symbols and myths to promote racial purity and fears of a white genocide. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. I'm on a journey to understand how this group is... Okay. So, right off the bat, our white children. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> if other groups say, hey, I want to preserve our ethnicity, our nationality, this gal wouldn't have any problem with it. I guarantee it. But for some reason, white people doing it, that's a problem. Now, I'm not going to say yes or no that people should preserve whatever. I think you should turn to Christ. And if you're not in Christ, you're lost, which includes this lady, which includes the other guy, the other gal, this person, that family, whatever. We're all human. So somebody with this from this area or that, speaking this language or that, having more melanin, less melanin, medium, medium skin as my, as my children call it, um, medium brown. I'm Cardboard Box. I did a video. Check it out up here. I sat with one of my daughters, my oldest daughter, and we talked about paint swatches and which color we are. I'm Cardboard Box. It's a little hard to tell because the light's kind of reflecting it, but I identify as cardboard box. But this gal is disturbed. A disturbing trend in white nationalism. Well, who says white nationalism is bad? Who says it's good? If you don't have any actual standard by which to measure, which is the word of God, and most specifically God himself, that's how we know God because of his word, his revealed word, and most specifically the word made flesh, Jesus being the exact imprint, like a thumbprint. We see this in Hebrews 1. He is the exact image, express image of God. So, a little bit more. I'm going to take their word for it. 
and to meet the anti-racist heathens who are fighting to reclaim their religion Notice from heathens. Experience. I'm doing everything that I can do that shows their evil deeds that they do behind those doors. The vast majority are white men who are fragile, weak, and need a sense of purpose, and they find that in the fact that they say they can celebrate their whiteness. It's foul. It's foul. So that lady's white. Um, and is she not celebrating her whiteness? Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but what's wrong with that? If, again, there is no God. If, again, eat, drink, for tomorrow you die, as Paul tells us. If there is no resurrection of the dead, it doesn't really matter. If there is no God, it doesn't matter. Now, I understand atheists get all, oh, I can be good without God. I'm not saying you can or cannot be good without God. I'm saying you have no purpose to be good without God. There is no foundation. You've literally built your house on sand. Actually, not even sand. It's floating in midair. My, one of my favorites, Francis Schaeffer of yesteryear, died in the early 80s, wrote tons of great books. He's got, if you pick up any Francis Schaeffer book, just any of them, they're all good. Uh, some are better than others, but they're all good. And he talks about f have their feet firmly planted in midair. She's using, she's got this, this indignation, this gal that's being interviewed. And it's like, but why? Why do you, why do you care? Why are you mad? Keep going. An abandoned Lutheran church as a temple for their group. The city council held a meeting to let representatives make their case. 100,000 years from now, I want there to be blonde hair and blue eyes. It's like any other tradition. I want it preserved. And it's worthy to be preserved. It's a folk heritage. assembly. And our own people are worthy of preservation. In the end, the council, in a three to one vote, granted them a provisional use. Okay, so that guy is talking about, he's wearing a mask. Um, he's talking about heritage and preserving heritage there's nothing wrong with heritage great and if this were a hispanic man from you know mexico or peru um a cuban man a brazilian man latino latinx would anyone have a problem with this would this even be a story no it wouldn't it wouldn't be a story and that's that's the really just insane stupidity of the leftist ideal. There's so, everybody, again, everybody's biased. Everybody's, every, we're all, there's a certain level of hypocrisy in each one of us. Let's be real here. But like, this is so thick because it's like, oh no, there's a bunch of white nationalists, right? This is after Charlottesville and Donald Trump's a racist, blah, 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 and all this. And look at how racist we are. And yet the very title of this, and this is kind of one of my main points of this, America's last Whites only church. So if America, audience, let this sink in for a moment. If America was this by golly, gosh darn, so racist, racist. If it was, wouldn't we have a lot of whites only churches? Like more than one? I mean, there's 45,000 churches in the Southern Baptist Convention alone. Not to mention the EV Free Church, the Methodist United Church, the PCA church, these are all conservative, L Missouri uh, Lutheran, Synod Lutheran, Missouri Synod Lutherans, yeah, also conservative. Then there's the PCUSA, a liberal dead church, right? There's the Northern Baptist, there's all sorts of other Bible churches, there's Calvary Chapel churches, not to mention Jehovah Witness churches, Seventh-day Adventist churches, Mormon churches, so-called, Roman Catholic churches. There are literally hundreds of thousands of churches in America alone. And this is inside America's last, not one of, but last. Again, this is why I do this channel, because these people are just coming at and saying, how dare you exist? First of all, there's no reason to be racist or not racist if God doesn't exist. I'm not racist. And having hatred and animosity towards somebody is a sin. You're showing partiality. And sadly, these people are just often as racist as the people they condemn. Because they show partiality. They insult people. They hate people based on how they look. There's people that hate me based on my skin tone. Is that not racist? Of course it's racist. Of course, it's racist. Like, it's so stupid. 20, 30 years ago, anybody who has a brain that partially works would say that. Of course, it's racist. <clears throat> but this is last, America's last only, whites only church. So if America's so gosh darn racist, why is there only one church left 
that has this white nationality sort of thing, <clears throat> which, by the way, is not a church. It's actually a temple. And I'm skipping around, so I'll just kind of fill in the gaps because I know you don't want to watch this video for an hour. It's a temple. They're pagans. They're worshiping multiple gods. They're not even remotely Christian. Mormonism, also polytheistic. I've done other videos on them, uh, mainly through the uh, Chosen TV show. But they're actually polytheists. Mormons are. Well, these people are too. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible is emphatically clear. There is a creator, a God who revealed himself in three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, This is just classic, orthodox, historical, centuries-old Christianity. And anything else isn't, right? So it says, it says last whites only temple is what it should say. But people will be like, well, it's a temple. Like temple of, uh, like, uh, of Molech, of, of Thor, or he corrects her and it's really Tor, because actually T-H is T, T, not the. But anyway. Jewish temple, Muslim, a mosque. Are they mosques, temple? What are they? Keep going. This permit. This is now the group's third temple. The council was warned that blocking the acquisition would violate the AFA's First Amendment right to freedom of religion. Pat Thorson was one of the members that granted the permit. I'm going to skip a what little What about ahead. the uncomfortability that people of color now have in this community because of this church that is excluding them well, based off of their color? One of the members that when we had the public... Okay, what about the uncomfortability? Well, again, if God doesn't exist, we shouldn't care about what people think. It doesn't matter. And really, God does exist. <laughs> he has revealed himself in the Lord Jesus. But nowhere in the scripture does it talk about being uncomfortable. Oh, I... Life is hard. This world is hard. This world is cursed. It's fallen because of sin, because of human rebellion, because of this girl's human rebellion and this guy's human rebellion and my human rebellion, ultimately tracing back to Adam and Eve's, our first parents, human rebellion. God cursed the ground. Oh, what about their uncomfortability? And this is the, again, the leftist ideal of making everything equal, this kind of neutral playing ground, playing field, whatever. We're not, we're not neutral. This girl's not neutral. If you were to ask this this reporter, she would absolutely 100% say Donald Trump's a racist. And then she would have, or somebody like him, and have very little evidence of him actually being a racist. Now, this isn't about Donald Trump or anybody else per se. But people just throw out the words racist all day long without any actual context. Oh, this is racist. The group, by the way, and I'm not defending or um, castigating them either way, but they don't say they're racist. They're just excluding people. Well, every religion, every group has some sort of discrimination. Again, this is the lie about, oh, you can't be discriminate, discriminatory. Listen, the last time you were downtown, whenever that was, whenever that was, a year ago, a month ago, 10 years ago, whatever downtown, downtown LA, New York, Baltimore, Atlanta, wherever you were, you didn't go down a dark alley, right? You put your wallet in the front of your pocket. Ladies, you held your purse a little tighter. You locked your door. You locked your front door. You do certain things. You hide your computer. You put your bag under because we're going to the theme park and we don't want people to break in. That's discriminatory. All of it's discriminatory. And nobody has a problem with it. But this girl, well, these people are discriminating because they say you have to be from Western Europe, Northern Western Europe. Okay. I think it's stupid because the gospel's for everybody. But they're not preaching the gospel. This isn't even remotely a church. Like, okay, what are you talking about? They're literally worshiping multiple gods. They're polytheists. They're pagan. It says they're heathens. Heathen, pagan. Like, okay. Like, but this is the whole goofiness of even a headline and this lady lumping everybody in together. Because sadly, maybe not, but she probably would lump in most Christians, especially churches that have people that look just like me in it as being racist as well, as just as bad as these astral folk, whatever people. But we don't exclude people in our church. I've never been to a church that excludes people. You have to profess. There's an interview. Hey, how did you come to know Jesus? Oh, I don't know Jesus. I just want to come here because it's a club. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about the gospel then. Right? Because that's what the church is. The church is not some organization. The church is not some community group. It's not some friends club. It's rather members of the body of Christ here and now in this present world 
worshiping God. Now, these people want to worship God too. And the First Amendment, I don't know why they quotes. The First Amendment protects that. Okay, fine. Fine. I think they're abhorrently wrong. I think they're going to be destroyed in eternity if they don't repent and believe in the gospel. If they don't turn to Christ, the living God, the, the, the holy God, the righteous God, the God worth worshiping. Because freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and so on is protected by the First Amendment because it actually comes from God. God's not forcing people to believe in him, right? Ultimately, we're not forcing people to adhere to the gospel. Rather, like Paul does, you you destroy every uh, thing raised up, every thought raised up against the knowledge of Christ, okay? You take your thoughts captive for Christ. You take good, bad theology and battle it with good theology. Right, Paul reasoned all day long in the script with with, with them uh, from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. So you can't just be like, well, automatically you're saved or you're not saved. Automatically, I'm going to force force you to do this or that, believe this or that. You can't force somebody to believe anything. Now, you just can't do that. You have to convince them. The Holy Spirit has to convict them of their sin and then bring in the newness of life through faith in the Lord Jesus. That's what happens. But this lady's talking about, oh, my feelings. Ah, what about people and hurt? Okay. But again, this lady isn't probably, certainly not a Christian. I wouldn't imagine. She could be. Some flavor. I doubt it. But let's say say she's not. I don't know because she doesn't reveal it, so I'm not going to assume. But the leftist ideal is godless. Right? They don't believe in God. They don't believe in any sort of transcendental reality. They don't believe in a law, and they don't believe in a law giver. Therefore, eat, drink for tomorrow, you die. We're all chemicals, we're all material. It doesn't matter. Survival of the fittest, it doesn't matter. Seriously, it doesn't matter if this is true. 1 Corinthians 15 is abundantly clear on that.